Well, some religious groups may not like it, but a poll shows that a plurality of New Jerseyans do support it. It is called the Death with Dignity Act, and it would give New Jerseyans suffering from terminal illnesses access to drugs to end their lives under certain conditions. The bill cleared the Assembly Health Committee last week, and joining us now from the State House is the sponsor, Assemblyman John Berzicelli. Assemblyman, welcome back to the program. This essentially, if I, if I read this bill right, would give ultimately the voters the right to decide whether this should become the law. Is that correct? It's presently structured that way. Uh, traditionally, New Jersey is not uh, an initiative and referendum state. Normally, we only go to the ballot for purposes of the Constitution. Uh, as a legislator, I would prefer the legislature take this up, uh, but it is presently structured to go to, to, a, to a referendum question. Now, whether it stays that way through the end, Mike, it's uh, too early to tell. Would you, well, is there any particular reason why it was structured this way? Well, the other states had approached it. Most recently, Massachusetts uh, thought that this was the best track to go. When we did research, and this issue came to my staff's attention, uh, we just simply picked that structure up, uh, both in how the bill is structured and working in Oregon and Washington State, where it's been in place in Oregon, I guess, for almost 14 years. Uh, so, so it just made sense to just pick it up as it was, fine-tune it to New Jersey's uh, statute language, and uh, to let it stand uh, from start to finish as the other states had approached it. But now as we get into it, uh, I think uh, we'll have additional discussions as to whether a referendum is the way to go. Tell me how this would work. Who would actually qualify for this and what would actually happen? I mean, uh, it wouldn't be as simple as somebody saying, I've got this diagnosis, I walk to the pharmacist, he gives me medicine, and I go home and I take this, this profound and final act, right? No, it, no it, it, it would not happen that way, nor is this Dr. Kevorkian where you could pick the phone up and call someone and have them come to your house if you're 47 years old and just simply decide that things aren't going your way and, and you don't want to continue on. It's not like that at all. This would be another option and a matter of control for a person who is formally diagnosed with a terminal illness uh, with, uh, with six months or less to live, uh, a, a, a diagnosis that has to be con confirmed by a second physician. Uh, and so if you're in that spot and you choose that you would like to have this control and available to you, you would tell your doctor that if your doctor was willing to participate, uh, there'd be a certification, it'd have, you'd have to sign something, it couldn't be coerced by family members, had to have to be witnessed by an independent party, and there's a 15-day wait period. And at the conclusion of that, it's then determined if you are in sound mind and not clinically depressed and you're able to make a clear decision on your own behalf, that 48 hours later, you would be able to have the prescription filled and you have to self-administer. Uh, many people uh, in Oregon, uh, which we've looked at very closely, get the prescription and, uh, and don't use it for one reason or another, uh, either because they choose not to or because their situation improves or they just like the idea of having control of their circumstances. So it's a very personal decision. Uh, it really comes down to the individual, individual, their mind, their conscience, and what they think is best for them. And uh, all statistics indicate that those who would choose to take this route are really a very small minority of those who are in the home stretch. I understand this is not just an abstract issue to you as well. You actually, your, your sister-in-law, if I understand correctly, testified about some family members who have been through situations where they might have perhaps been able to benefit from this law. Well, it, 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 that was a pretty powerful uh, moment for my sister-in-law, Claudia. Uh, she had asked to come and testify. Uh, this bill was worked on and dropped uh, absent of my talking to her about it. And uh, after the Star-Ledger story ran, when the bill was initially dropped, it was dropped very quietly. She called to remind me of the circumstances of her father, which I remembered. She was married to my brother at that time. And she was very clear that uh, her father, who, who ended up taking his life by suicide in a firearm, if this option had been available, would have chosen this way, and then the family would have been able to say goodbye, and it would have been on his terms. And then the, uh, the scars of having to find him as they did would not remain as they do to this day. So that's another dimension to this, this, uh, this discussion. We're doing this discussion on a day when the Pope has announced that he intends to step down from his position. Uh, obviously, there's been strong resistance from the Catholic Church and from other religious denominations as well to, to this kind of concept. Do you expect a lot of resistance, organized resistance, if this bill goes further? Well, first of all, their, their, uh, their participation is welcome and their position is respected. And in fact, the bill recognizes it because it does, not, it does not require a doctor to participate, nor does it require a hospital to offer this service if they, if they choose not to. And it, 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 it removes any potential civil liability if someone refuses to engage in this conversation with their patient. This, is, this law is not mandatory in any way other than the steps that it does prescribe if the person is going to engage this option. So 
for those who have, have strong religious convictions, those religious convictions will not be intruded upon. And, uh, and it's about the person lying in the bed and not the person standing next to the bed. So uh, many people find comfort in the thought that they can control their circumstances to the very end. Assemblyman, we have to leave it there. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you, Mike.